You know, it's, it's fascinating because when you joined WWE in uh, February 99 and you debuted at St. Valentine's Day Massacre and you came through the ring, you threw <laughs> Austin at the cage. And I remember kind of everybody talking about, this is going to be the big pay-per-view match, Austin and the Giant. Right. And that's where it's going to go. And it ended up that you guys fought three weeks later on Raw. He beat you on Raw and then you turned babyface like three weeks later. So it felt like all this kind of stuff changed. I mean, when you got there in 99, was there ever a plan for you and Austin to be a big pay-per-view main event? Because it felt like that was a no, a no-brainer. Well, uh, it, it, it would have been a no-brainer on paper, but WWE was a completely different environment then. I mean, it was a very aggressive... Um, when I was in WCW, I'd only been there, like my first match was against Hulk Hogan. So I had three years experience of pretty much working with guys like Flair and Arn and Sting and Luger and Savage and, and all these great guys that I was like everybody's kid brother, you mm-hmm. know? So they looked out for me and I did this and I just basically did what I was told. When I got to WWE and got in the ring, um, it was a much different environment. You had to fight and claw. Guys were very protective over their characters. They were very protective over the business. Um, and it was the Attitude Era, and there was the wars and Monday Night Wars. All that was going on. And, you know, let's call, you know, a spade a spade and, and put the truth where it is. I didn't have the, um, I didn't have the skills to run like that. When I first got there, it was all new to me. I really didn't. I didn't understand how WWE business. I didn't understand uh, character psychology that well. I mean, I'm still pretty green three years in the business. Um, so I think when I got to WWE, a lot of that was um, I, I wasn't I wasn't ready for that position. I wasn't ready for that spot. I mean, there's no there's no way to sugarcoat it or make it look good. I wasn't ready for it. And looking back now, I'm not upset about it. I mean, if I knew what I knew now, it would have been a completely different run. Mm-hmm. That's just time and hindsight, you know. Yeah. Um, I had to go through those experiences. I had to, you know, get the ass chewings from Undertaker and, and uh, develop the relationships that I developed with Stone Cold and Triple H and all these guys where we worked hard to to make me a better in-ring talent. Um, and it was a tough struggle. It was tough to understand um, because the things that I did in WCW that worked um, is not what you know Vince McMahon wanted. Is not what the WWE um, mantra was then. You know, I mean, they didn't want uh, at the time uh, the old school kind of stuff. You know, they didn't. You know, they wanted something progressive. They wanted uh, they wanted matches with that were super competitive. You know, and a guy like Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was the number one guy in the company, who was, you know, uh, filling the seats like he was filling them. He's not going to bring himself down to bring someone else up. You have to step up to his level to get it. And it took me a couple of years to where I could get up to Steve's level. You know, I mean, one of the biggest turning points of my career was working Stone Cold Steve Austin. When things finally clicked mentally for me uh, was because of Steve Austin. You know, it's just, I, we had one of our matches overseas and it just, uh, it's one of those things where you really click and know who you are as a talent and every talent experiences that at different times in their career where they settle in and they know exactly what they're bringing to the table and outside influence diminishes. Cause when you're, when I started, there was no one like me. I had all this athleticism. I was good looking for a giant. I could talk, um, you know, so it was like some was like work like Andre, some want to be more athletic. So I had to find my own mold. I mean, I wasn't as good as an athlete as Undertaker. You know what I mean? I wasn't the machine like Kane that moved like Kane did. You know, I was a little bit more loose or goosey in the way I moved. I wasn't like Andre. Um, so I had to find my own uh, identity, I think, because I couldn't be this what other people thought I would be. I had to find my own. And it wasn't until I worked Steve later on in my career where all that clicked and I figured out who the hell I was, which once I figured it out, it's like one of those duh moments where you slap your forehead and go, Oh, that would have been easy if I had just done that from the beginning. But again, you try, you, you're trying to find out who you are. And that's one of the things I try to help the younger talent now um, is to be authentic and find out who they are. Cause guys, Oh, be a giant. Be a, well, what in the F does that mean? Be a giant. What does that mean? No sell. Then everybody gets pissed off because I'm not selling their stuff. I mean, what does that mean? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, as you get a little bit of experience and find out your identity and come from a more authentic place, it's, it's a lot easier to understand.